Hello, today's webinar is the BR3X. We'll use a red spotlight to guide through the uh, discussion on the presentation. Agenda, Be a comparison of the BR3 to the BR3X functions and cross-references, parameter and relay status, wiring, specs, programming, and some troubleshooting. The BR3X is a programmable three relay advanced logic module and restroom controller. It is 100% the exact same hardware as our existing or current BR3 module, all of the existing functionality plus more. Here's a comparison, the BR3X compared to the BR3 here, BR3 and a slightly different uh, vector drawing of the BR3X, essentially identical. We have a wet input and we have four dry inputs. Same with the BR3X, a wet input and then input one, two, three, and four. Three relay outputs, R1, R2, R3. Same as the BR3, three relay outputs. We've got a power input. 12 to 24 BAC, VDC, same here, and the same programmable jumpers for selecting a wet or dry output on relay one. And then the two setup buttons, INCR, parameter, PRAM, same on the BR3X. Functions, uh, today we'll in this presentation, we will discuss the red areas, the function 36, function 37, which is new for the BR3X, and then NL for normally locked restroom, and NU for normally unlocked restroom, and then DN for day-night mode. All the other functions that are shown here are shown on the uh, BR3 and the BR3X, but the ones highlighted are what we'll be showcasing here today. Function cross-reference, the BR3 function would be this column, BR3X function here. So for example, probably the most common and the legacy number Function 25, a delay on make, delay on break function for using electric strike on an automatic door operator. This function goes away on the BR3X, but you can do the same thing with any of these four functions. You can sequence relay one and relay two the exact same way as a function 25. And then on function 35 of the BR3, that would go away on the BR3X, but you accomplish the same thing with these two functions here. And then function 75, similar to this, then the same functions on the BR3X will accomplish the same thing. Parameter and relay status, relay one through three is shown on the BR3 LCD screen as R1, R2, R3. The delay between relay one and relay two is D1. The delay between relay one and relay three is shown as D2. And if you choose reverse logic for input one, it'll be a lowercase r and l. Not programmed or no parameter would be shown on the BR3 in that instance. Hold time for relay one through three are respectively H1, H2, and H3. And then this one here, uh, relay one and two is activated during their respective hold times, shown by two horizontal lines. And then relay one and relay three, an upper and a lower, so the middle line is missing for relay two, so that means relay one and three are activated. And then all three, relay one, two, and three are activated. Function 36 equals a three relay sequencer with a one shot option. So if we look at the wiring of the BR3 input one and ground, 
normally used to activate or start a sequence. That doesn't change. But the key difference on this function 36, if you make a dead short or put a jumper on input 2, 3, or 4, that will control relay 1, 2, and 3 respectively in the sense that that output becomes a one-shot function. So for example, if you activate input one and ground and make and hold or short that, whichever jumper you have on input two, three, and four, that respective output will run the hold timer and expire and then relax when the hold timer is done. So that's what we call the one-shot function. If you uh, in the past, if you make and hold the input, all the outputs will change and hold uh, the, the hold timer will freeze and not start counting down until the input releases. Not the case when you put a jumper here on uh, input two, three, or four. That controls relay one, two, and three as a one-shot function. Over here, uh, if you trigger or the input one uh, is wet or dry in this case where you have wet over here or input one and ground one or the other here relay two will close after a time delay d1 and then hold for the whole time of h2 relay three will close after d2 delay and then hold for its respective h3 timer note on function 36 if input one or the wet input is maintained and by jumping input two three and or four will allow R1, two, and or three respectively to close, run the whole time, and then open or reverse, depending on what normally open, normally close function you have. And thus, this is the one-shot function. If no jumpers are set, then R1, two, and three will close or reverse and hold and not time out or reverse until input one or the wet input is released, just like uh, function 35 would be now on the BR3. So the jumpers are the key indicator here to perform the one-shot function. Function 37 equals a three relay sequencer with independent output relay option. Same scenario as the function 36, input one and ground is your input to start the sequence. Input two controls relay one, input three controls relay two, and input four controls relay three. So what does this mean? So if you start a seat, you'll start the sequence with input one and ground, but input two, three, or four will only trigger relay one, two, or three individually. It won't start a sequence, it'll trigger that respective relay as an output. So here's the scenario trigger input one or the wet input, relay one or R1 will close and hold for its respective hold time, H1. Relay two will close after the de delay D1 and hold for its respective H2 time. R3 will close after D2 delay and hold for the H3 hold time for its respective hold time. If you trigger input two, only R1 or relay one will close and hold. If you trigger input three, relay two or R2 will close and hold. Or if you trigger input four, only R3 will close and hold for its respective hold time. NL, normally locked restroom. Here we've got a dry input triggering input one and ground. Another dry input on input two and ground. This would be for the activation device inside the restroom. And then we have a push to lock function, input three. And then input four is a door position switch or a DPS. The sequence is as follows, so trigger input one or the wet input here, wet or input one and ground. Relay one will close and hold for its respective time. Relay two will close 
after the D1 delay and hold for time for its respective H2 timer. If you trigger input two, relay one will close and hold for its time. Relay two will close after D1 delay and hold for its time. Relay three will open. If you trigger input three, relay three will close and input one will be inhibited. So if we go back to input three, this is the push to lock button. This will be mounted inside the restroom to basically shunt or inhibit, disable the activation device outside of the restroom. This is so you could have your privacy, have the door locked up, and no one could uh, unintentionally walk in on you. Note for this function, uh, input three will not function unless input four is closed. Input four should be closed when the door is closed, and that's for your door position switch. That'll indicate the door is closed. Here's a breakdown of the uh, inputs and outputs for the normally locked restroom inputs. Input one, uh, the output is R1 will close and hold for its respective H1 time. R2 will close after the D1 time and hold for H2 time. Input three, R3 will close, relay three that is. Input one will be inhibited, preventing entrance from the outside. Input two, relay one will close and hold. Relay two will close after the D1 delay and hold. And R3 will open. So the note here on this function, input three won't function until input four is closed by the DPS. So we gotta have a door position switch that'll close when the door is closed for that input three to function correctly. NU for normally unlocked restroom. Same wiring as the normally locked. Use the dry input, input one and ground. That'll be the exterior or outside activation device. And then we have a dry contact activation device for inside the restroom. Then the push to lock button, and then the door position switch or DPS, typically a magnetic switch or some type of micro switch. The sequence is as follows. If we trigger or short input one, relay two will close and hold for its respective time. We do this because remember, this is normally unlocked. We don't need to release a lock or electric strike to gain access if you're using an automatic door opener. So trigger input one will fire relay two, which typically would go to your activation circuit of your door control. So if we trigger input two, R1 will open or reverse. R2 will close after time delay D1 and hold for its respective H2 timer. And then relay three, R3 will open. If we choose to trigger by input three, relay one and relay three will close and input one will be inhibited. That's your privacy function there. And on a note on this, same as the previous note, input three will not function unless input four is closed by the DPS door position switch. Input four must close when the door is closed for this function to work. Normally unlocked restroom inputs and outputs explained. Inputs, input one, makes output R2 close and hold for its respective H2 time. Input three, R1 and R3 will close. Input one will be inhibited. Input two, relay one will open. Relay two will close after the D1 delay and hold for its respective H2 time. And then relay three will open. Here are the note, just as we stated on the previous slide, Input three will not function unless input four is closed. The DPS is closed when the door is closed. So that door position switch shall close when the door is closed. DN, lowercase dn, equals a three relay sequencer with a day-night 
function. It's in 24-hour mode. There is no clock function on the BR3. It's not using a uh, clock function. We're, we're selecting day-night with a day-night switch. So when a switch is shorted or made on input four and ground, that will set the mode from day to night. So when the switch is open on input four and ground, that's the day mode. When it's closed, that's the night mode. So go back to input one and ground. That's how we start the sequence. And then in the day mode, this button or push plate or switch is connected to input two and ground. And then input three could be used for a card reader or other secure device. And then the selector switch on input four and ground. Outputs will go electric lock on a relay one. Relay two is the activation circuit of the door control. And then relay three could be used for any auxiliary signal, light, sounder, whatever you would like to work with that. So here's the sequence. So trigger input one, two, or what input? R1, relay one will close and hold for its respective H1 time. R2 will close after the time delay D1 and hold for its respective H2 time. R3, relay three, will close after time delay D2 and hold for its respective H3 time. If we trigger input three, R1 will close and hold for time H1 and input two will be uninhibited for five seconds. So what is input two? We go back to input two. That's the day mode. That's the uh, input for that uh, connection there. So that will be uninhibited or enabled for five seconds when we trigger input three. So the note for this function, input two will only function if input four is open. And input four, as we stated previously, that's our day-night selector mode. Technical specification, supply voltage, 12 to 24. That's a range. That could be 16 or 18 uh, AC or DC voltage. Current consumption from 30 to 130 milliamps. Temperature rating, minus 15 to 150 degrees. Inputs, there are four inputs, dry inputs, and one wet input with a rated voltage of 5 to 24 volts AC or DC. The contact rating, just like the standard BR3, three amps on relay one when set to dry at 24 VAC or 30 VDC. It's reduced to one amp when using it as a wet output, which means we'll be pushing voltage through that output. R2, relay two, three amps at 24 VAC or 30 VDC, and R3 is one amp rating at 24 VAC and 30 VDC. Dimensions, same as the BR3, a little over about five and a quarter wide by about two and a quarter tall and about one inch thick. Housing is a ABS plastic white translucent housing, different color than the standard BR3. Programming, just like the BR3, but we'll go review here. Press and hold the two INCR and PARAM increase and parameter buttons. Press them simultaneously for three seconds, and then the BR3X display will toggle back and forth FF for function function, and then zero zero because it's not programmed to anything. This will go back and forth, alternate for about five seconds. Within that five seconds, press the INCR button to cycle through the parameter to show the one you want. In this example, uh, we can choose function 10 or function 11, whatever function you want. So choose your function and then once it's set, you can select the parameter to cycle through the parameters for that respective function. In this case, H1, hold time for relay one, or H2, hold time for relay two. By default, all the parameters are set to zero, nothing. 
If you, for example, leave H1 set to zero, Relay 1 or R1 will never change state. Zero is nothing and uh, will not change. So you always have to have something, some value on the either H1, H2, or H3 uh, for that respective relay to change state. Then you, uh, yeah, you press the increase or INCR to cycle through, change the relay state or the uh, output uh, hold time to, in this case, one second. So H1, the hold time represents hold time for relay one, will change relay one for one second. You simply repeat that for all the other parameters. So H2, H3, and then we have D1, the delay between relay one and two, or D2, the delay between relay one and relay three. You got to set a value because remember, by default, zero is nothing. No change will occur on that respective output relay. So you always have to put something on it if you want it to work. And then simply wait five seconds for the BR3X to save and then go to its uh, display function on the uh, LCD screen. Troubleshooting. Possible problems, the BR3X will not react to any inputs. Could be possible cause, could be incorrect power, not programmed, incorrect wiring, or a defective BR3X. The most likely fault is the to ensure that the function is programmed, whichever program function you have, the BR3X does not show a zero, zero, and any or all H values are set to at least zero one. Like we said previously, if the H1 or H2, H3 is zero, 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 you have nothing, it will not change state. Has to have a minimum of zero one. Uh, power supply, if there's no power, obviously nothing will happen. And then verify your wiring to make sure your inputs are inputs and outputs are going to the respective place. BR3X has no output. Uh, incorrect output devices ensure other devices are connected and for the specific function that you've programmed it to. Again, the output may not have a program, just like stated above. BR3X makes sure uh, no zero zero is for any H value should be at least zero one so it will uh, change status could be incorrect wiring verify it's applied exactly as described for the specific function programmed or possibly all jumpers uh, are configured differently and uh, maybe you want a wet output and you didn't configure it that way that's one possibility and then the, the least likely would be the defective br3x also, there are some potential errors shown on the display that are not shown in the user's guide. Uh, EEPROM error, reset the BR3 or recycle the BR3, power cycle what that is, and if necessary, reprogram. If uh, returns, then you would have to replace the BR3. Most common would be E2, would be like an EEPROM shock or faulty power uh, causing issues with the EEPROM chip on the BR3. Features and benefits, the next generation uh, BR3, all it has, this has all the same functionality of the current BR3 plus a three relay sequencer plus a one shot function, a three relay sequencer with independent relay function. It has a normally locked restroom function and a normally unlocked restroom function. It has a three relay sequencer with a day night mode. The restroom controller has a sink is for a single occupancy restroom controller for both normally locked and normally unlocked restrooms. A day night 24 hour mode selected by the day night switch make and break function uh, that controls the push plate access for daytime and nighttime usage. It's from the BR3 platform with the exact same field proven hardware exact same wiring setup and 
programming. And that's it. If any questions, you can contact uh, technical support or customer service and sales at the same number here, 800-523-2462. If you have general technical questions for BEA Tech Services Group, you could email them at tech underscore services at beainc.com. Additional information could be obtained at our website at beasensors.com. Thanks for attending.